Anyway, would you fight all big guys, all big punches, you've got all massive men. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not a six foot five, only ninety six pound, heavy. Now we're starting off with Weaver in America. Tell me a little bit about that fight. What was your preparation for the fight? How was that? Your preparation? How did you start off your fight for the Weaver fight? Your first fight in America? Oh, the Weaver fight. We, we went to camp. We 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 always went to camp, and I had a camp up in the Poconos. Every time I went up to the Poconos, it was you know above sea level, and every time I came off the hill, I was in great shape. So, and I've never lost a fight being up at the Poconos. And then you went on to Ruddick. Tell me that was a great fight, wasn't it? The Ruddick fight? Ruddick. Well, Ruddick. Ruddick. Answer, Ruddick. Ruddick. That's the answer. Ruddick. Ruddick. Tell me about the fight. Me and Ruddick didn't fight. No, did you not? No. Oh, wow. That was the only I fight. I want to hear it from him, though. Yeah, that was the only fight that everybody felt that, you know, we should have fought, but we never fought. His, his business people around him, his business people around him didn't want that fight to happen because they knew what would happen. Yeah. Yeah. Now Tony Tucker, that was your next one, wasn't it? Tony Tucker, hard man to fight. Hard man to fight, you know, when Tony Tucker comes out, that's a Don King man. He's a Don, when I say Don, Don King. King. Anytime Don wants a title, he sends in Tony Tucker. Because Tony Tucker has that, you know, boxing ability where he moves and jabs and he's like Mahomet Dal into a boy. But he was a good test for me because of that. Good boxer. My my thing, I wanted to knock him out. Because nobody knocked him out. So I wanted to be the first guy to knock him out. And I almost had him too. <laughs> well I why did he go? Referee saved him. <laughs> Tony Tucker, great stop. Yeah, we're on the floor, brilliant. Now we're going to start off coming back to Britain. The one and only Bruno, Bruno. Frank Bruno, British boxer, two British boxers. Now, the fight was in Wales. Can you explain why the fight was in Wales, two British boxers? Yeah. Uh, the best. No, uh, you know, the other big places to hold like 30 people, there was. There was 30,000 people, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't a place out there, and I think Wembley or, uh, wasn't built yet. So. Wow. It's, it, it, I don't know if it's just me, but it's cold down here, and it was outdoor arena, wasn't it? Tell me a bit about that. What well, was the preparation for the fight? Because you're warming up, but you're going down in the cold. Just tell me the preparation for that fight. Yeah, a lot of people don't remember, but a long time ago we had fights in a, that were covered by HBO and when you had a fight over here they wanted to show it in America so three o'clock in the morning was the time that we had to uh, fight and there was like 30,000 people three in the morning and it was raining and cold <laughs> so it was difficult you know when they told me in the that it's cold out there it's raining that we have to wait a little bit until the rain stops and it did stop and then we were able to go out there I was still a little cold. I warmed up in the dressing room, but I was still a little cold. Uh, Manny, my trainer, said, yo, bring that blanket, bring that blanket. So that after the round, they could put it on me, and it worked, you know. It took me about four rounds to get warmed up. <laughs> yeah, you are, to be fair, Lennox, get beat the first four rounds. Frank Bruno come out and pump, didn't he? Frank Bruno came out serious. He wanted to hurt me. He wa I wanted to hurt him, he wanted to hurt me. So it was that situation where, you know, we just have to wait for the right time. I think I started off too fast in the first few rounds trying to hurt him because it sapped my strength a little bit. And then I kind of moved around until that perfect opportunity arose. You want to be Frank? Who was in the fight? Who was anybody else was in the fight? Wow, a lot of people, excellent. What a great fight. So the first four rounds get beat, then you just come back. And of course, he's not front down. Excellent. Round of applause, great. And that was in Wales. Well done, Wales, for holding that fight. Great stuff. Now, this next guy, the next opponent, Tommy Morrison. He was the new White Hawk, the said the White Mike Tyson and all that sort of stuff. Wow, you hammered that guy, didn't you? Tell me a bit about that fight. Yeah, Tommy Morrison, you know, at that time was getting a lot of attention. <laughs> He was getting a lot of acclaim, he was in a movie, yeah. you know, what he was spoken about. And then, as a movie star, he said he wanted to 
I, you know, join boxing. He wanted to be a boxer. And, uh, you know, had Sylvester Stallone behind him and everything like that. So when he was stepping in the ring with me, I'm like, no. He's, he's a movie star. He should never have fought me. And I'm going to show you why. So I went out there, I went out there on a mission to, uh, to beat him. And I did. Tell me all the all the Ray Versa, that was a great fight, Ray Versa, because it went the full distance. Yep. Tell me about that fight, what were your thoughts in that fight, because it was a split decision. Did you think you won that fight, or was it a split decision? I thought, yeah, I thought I won the fight, but it was difficult. You know, he had his crowd there, it, uh, I'm boxing him in his hometown, and um, his manager fought out the first three round, uh, rows of the, the fight, so he had all his crowd there every time on. He mounted the attack on me, he would get the crowd go up, I'm like, he didn't even hit me. Um, and then there were situations where, you know, he was testing the army, because he's from the army, so he's a, he knows how to work, he knows he is, but you're a tough guy. So he was trying to test me, I was testing him. I was in better shape than him, because every time he threw punches, I blocked them and came back. Sometimes I couldn't, because he threw punches and held me. And then it was a small ring as well. Um, the, uh, the Americans like putting you in like a 15 foot ring. But I was prepared for that. I was prepared. I knew that they were going to do that. And I was practicing my inside fighting. So if you see the fight, it's a back and forth fight. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Next time, the way you explain the round of applause. Now, this next fight, no questions from the end. This next fight, the call. What, like, that was a strange fight. What happened there? Like, it's what, what there? So let me tell you. You know, Alvin Paul beat me up, you know, and hit me with a great shot, which I put my chin in the way of. And um, <laughs> the referee never allowed me to continue, you know. And, you know, Re uh, Don King was hitting me because after the fight, I went into this room and it's like Don King with a big smile on his face with the flag, and the ref is right beside me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Face. Yeah, so you heard it from Lennox Lovers, ladies and gentlemen. You would have won that fight, but when you got Don King, he's a big character, Don King, in the world. What's your promoter? The best promoter. How was he? Yeah, yeah. Well, did you like Don King or did you not like because of No, him? I like Don King, but you know, I wouldn't sign a contract with him unless oh, I, a, a, a proper lawyer came in because he's always playing these different things. He'll give somebody half a contract and say sign it and then they'll fill in the rest of it. So, <laughs> And the funny thing, my mom was always scared of Don King in that sense. She would always say, never don't sign a contract, never sign anything, don't sign anything, unless the lawyer's there. So she, she really put that in my brain. So if there's any young boxers here, remember that. Don't be signing no contract unless your lawyer looks at it. Exactly. I don't know if that happens or anything like that. Is it going to Wow. You knocked him out. Did you know he would be that guy that was just a strong, big, hard guy, wasn't he? Tell yeah, me yeah, no, um, my mother was my chef at all my camps, so she makes wow. my meal before I fight. And in my meals are like scotch bun and peppers. So, <laughs> so that kind of wakes me up for the fight. And uh, she, went, she went shopping and she got some different peppers, some Hamadaro hum peppers or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Before the fight, I was still in my stomach. I'm like, so I go to the bathroom, or should I wait? The bathroom, or should I wait? So I was kind of in that kind of predicament. Anyway, so I went out there into the fight, and he kind of gave me a funny look like, like he just got me upset. So I just went across the ring and stuff, punching, and got rid of him. So it was that kind of thing. Galona, not LA, Galona, not LA. Wow, unbelievable. But this next guy, let's go champ, let's go champ. This guy Briggs was knocking them out, everybody in the first round. Now, did he catch you? He did catch you, didn't he? Oh yeah, he caught me. Tell me about the fight, now, the preparation, how the preparation, how do you come into that fight? 